the string butler questions and answers. I decided to make this video in response to a couple of questions that came up again and again in the comments below the last video I made about the string butler. And that was the one where I reviewed it and fitted it on a guitar. I'll put the link down below in the description in case you haven't seen that one and you want to see it. The first question is, what's the difference between version 2 and version 3 of the string butler? And to better answer that question, I've got a version 2 string butler and a version 3 string butler that I'll open up now and then we can compare the two. Okay, whilst I'm unpacking the string butlers, I'll just start to answer the question, what's the difference between version 2 and version 3? And the first thing I need to point out is that it's not like computer software. Version 3 isn't necessarily an improved version of version 2. It's just different. And I'll have to show you the differences in the two versions after I've finished unpacking it, because they are very similar. And as if to amplify this point, the instructions for version 2 and version 3 are both identical, so you fit them in exactly the same way. Looking at these two string butlers then, the gold one is version 2 and the black one is version 3. And looking at them alongside each other, there's very little difference. But whilst the difference is subtle, it is important. And what they've actually done is moved and lengthened the slot that you use to bolt the string butler into place. This illustration shows the difference and you can see I've taken the outline of version 2 and now I've overlaid it onto version 3 and you can see the version 3 slot is a lot longer and the ends of the slot are a lot closer together and what this means in simple terms is that version 3 will fit on guitars with narrower headstocks or where the top E string machine head and the bottom E string machine head are closer together and to demonstrate this point I'll show it you alongside this Yamaha headstock, which is fairly small. And first of all, you can see here's version 3, and it fits between the tuning posts on the top E string and the bottom E string. However, when we change over now and try version 2, you can see it's not going to fit. And this is the main difference between version 2 and version 3. And what this means is, before ordering a string butler, you'll have to measure the distance between the tuning posts you intend to fit the string butler to. And this way, you'll know which version is better for your guitar. So, for version 2, you need 44mm between the tuning posts. And for version 3, you only need 35mm between the tuning posts. However, if your tuning posts are further apart, there's no need to worry, because both versions go as wide as 58mm. Hopefully then, this has cleared up the question, what's the difference between the version 2 and version 3 string butler? However, just as a side note, there are many more versions, so if you've got a different style of guitar, there will be a string butler for your guitar. For example, here's the one for a flying V type shape. And you can see, if I hold it alongside uh, most of my guitars, it won't fit. It's specifically designed for the flying V head shape. And there's many other versions besides this one. Interestingly, from the time I did the review of the version 2 string butler, they seem to have changed slightly in that they seem better made now. The finish in the gold of the one I reviewed was a bit dodgy, it wasn't very well machined. However, they seem to have sorted that out, and this one's got a beautiful finish on it. Right, let's move on to question two. And the second question was a bit cheeky really, and what I was asked is, have I put it on upside down? Because the pictures they've seen on the internet showed the string butler the other way up. And to answer this, I'm going to refer to the instructions that came with this new string butler I've just opened. 
and if we look on the instructions you can see both ways are correct and in fact they've even designed the logo so the logo is correct whichever way you put it on originally I thought there was only two ways of fitting the string butler facing towards the headstock which is for when you've got a truss rod cover and facing towards the body of the guitar when you haven't got a truss rod cover however in the instructions it shows you you can also fit it on different tuning posts still facing towards the guitar and not interfering with the truss rod cover so there's actually three ways of fitting it and at the end of the day how you fit it is entirely up to you it depends on things like have you got a truss rod cover and is there any logo or part of a logo you don't want to cover up and in this video I've obviously not covered any of the vintage headstock fitting techniques because this would probably take an entire video so keep your eyes open for that in the future as in the previous video I fitted one on an electric guitar with a truss rod cover this time I'll fit one on an acoustic guitar without a truss rod cover and then you can compare the techniques. How to fit a string butler on an acoustic guitar. And on this guitar I'm going to fit a version 3 lightweight transparent acrylic one. Ideally this is a job you should do when you're changing the strings. However, in this particular case, I'm going to just take off the top E string and the bottom E string and loosen off the A string and the B string. So what I'll do first is put a capo on to hold the strings into place. Once I've put a capo into place, I can remove the top E string and the bottom E string from the tuning post. And that way I can access the nut on the bottom of the tuning post. And that's because I need to remove the nuts from the top B and the bottom E string because the string butler sits underneath the nut and then is held in place by the nut. I've speeded up this part of the video by two times so it doesn't get too boring. Once you've taken the bottom E string and the top E string off the string posts, you can remove the nut and the washer off the string posts as well. And that's because the string butler is fitted underneath both the nut and the washer. With the metal string butlers, you need a plastic washer underneath the string butler itself. But in the case of the acrylic string butler, you don't need one. Now I'm going to loosen the strings and you'll remember the ones you need to loosen are the A string and the B string. However, I'll loosen all the strings and then the guitar will be easier to work on. Once the remaining strings are loosened, you're ready to put the string butler into place. However, with the acrylic one, you really need to clean the headstock. And I was hoping this would show why, but it's not very clear. I'm sure you can imagine though, if you trap any dirt and dust underneath the acrylic one, you'll be able to see it there and you're not going to be able to get rid of it no matter how many times you clean the guitar. So you need to clean the guitar first before you put the string butler into place. Now if you're changing the strings at the same time, I'd recommend giving it a thorough clean. But in this particular case, I just need to get a paintbrush there and remove all the dust. Before putting the nuts on or starting to tighten it up, it's a good idea just to put it into place and look at it for a minute. And you want to look to check that there's no obvious dirt underneath it, especially the acrylic one obviously. Before you go any further, you also need to make sure the strings are rooted correctly around the string butler rollers. And they should be on the inside of the rollers. So each of the four rollers should have a string on the inside towards the centre of the headstock. The next thing I need to do is put the washers back into place. And it's really important you don't forget to do this. Because if you tighten up the nuts without the washers being in place, you could potentially break the string butler. Before I tighten the nuts up, I want to finger tighten them and double check again that the string butlers align properly before I tighten it up. In the comments of the previous installation I did, somebody suggested 
tightening up the D and the G string just slightly and these will automatically pull the uh, string buffer into place and that might be worth a try but I prefer to do it by sight. Whichever way you do it you need to half tighten the nuts just so it stops it moving around and you need to align the string buffer properly before you tighten it up all the way. Once you're happy with it you can put back on the bottom and the top E strings and then tighten up the other strings. And then before you tune it, just give it one final inspection and then you're ready to go to tune it up and use the guitar again. Once you've got all the strings back on the guitar and once you've got them tightened up a little, don't forget to remove the capo because this has done its job now. Right, I'll just tighten up the strings a little now, but I'm not going to tighten them up all the way. Once you've got the strings to a point where they're reasonably tight, but you can still move them, then you want to flick them onto each of their rollers. Don't try to do this when you've tuned the guitar up, because obviously you'll take the guitar out of tune, and also you might find it nearly impossible to move the strings. At this stage, I need to tidy up the strings a little, and I tend to do this in two stages. I'll cut them down to about an inch to two inches long, and then I'll tune the guitar up. And once I'm sure everything's okay, I'll cut the rest off. I always cut them back to about an inch or two inches initially in case there's a problem and I have to take a string or several strings off again. And if you've cut them right back, it's impossible to get the strings back on again. So you have to put a whole new set of strings on. So this approach can potentially save me that wastage. And now, once we've tuned the guitar up, it's ready to use again. The string butler doesn't affect the way the guitar plays or the way it sounds. It's purely in case you've got a particularly troublesome guitar when it comes to the tuning. And to be honest, this guitar didn't need a string butler, but it was the best guitar I had available at this time to demonstrate how to fit one on an acoustic guitar. But it's quite useful in a way, cause there's something on this guitar that I want to show to you. And that is, the way it's fitting onto the guitar. Now, if you look at it, the string butler is bolted on about halfway down the slot. And to me, I don't find this aesthetically pleasing. I think it looks a bit shoddy. Now, this is a version three string butler. However, if I'd have used a version two string butler, the washer would have fitted neatly into the end of that slot, just like it did on the first installation I did. So, it's well worth measuring up to make sure you get the right string buckler for your guitar. Hopefully, this has answered all the main questions that came up with the previous video. But, if you've got further questions, you need to visit www.string-butler.com And that's because I'm not a representative of string butler, I'm just a reviewer and a guitar teacher. So, any more in-depth questions? or price inquiries and stuff, you need to go to them. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video and you've not subscribed, please like and subscribe, and I'll be uploading new guitar lessons on Fingerstyle soon, so that should be quite interesting. Thanks for watching.